Hey, welcome back everyone to another video and in this one we will be taking a look at this weird thing right here and uh, this is basically the cheapest thin client I could find on Amazon uh, locally. So um, without further ado, uh, let's see how this came to be and uh, we won't be doing any thin client stuff, stuff it's probably super insecure to just connect this thing to the network buy a decent thin client and uh, yeah don't don't buy this stuff i just was super curious what sort of hardware goes into me make, making these el cheapo um thin clients so that's what the video is about um sure let's uh, let's see how this came to be uh, so here's my screen uh, simple as going to amazon.in and once you're there uh, just go thin client and for me it was so you can see it's kind of here um, sort by low to high and you get a bunch of books for some reason but if you go into electronics you still get a bunch of books where did all the thin clients go so maybe everyone just removed the listing because of the human malware and amazon not in doesn't show anything which is weird so every thin client is currently unavailable if i mean this is um this is like due to human malware but basically uh, this one was it and it was like 20 dollars um us uh, whatever it is in uh, in other currencies uh, I just converted it from mine so it's called thin when micro 2 some where it's just called thin invent uh, dual core 1.2 gigahertz 512 megs of RAM 4 gigabytes of internal storage for some reason uh, and Linux integrated graphics uh, which makes you believe that it's an x86 but it's not um, yeah, it's a weird one. I wanted to also get this one, but by the time everything was on lockdown So yeah, we can't buy anything from Amazon uh, But I I don't know what amazon.com shows in terms of the cheapest thin client available So we, we might just take a look because you know mm. So let's go thin client Not line Uh, yeah, they, they have some stuff. So let's try sorting by low to high and very, very different stuff and very expensive as well. So definitely not the kind of things you'll find here. So sort of this one, the next one to it, I, I don't know how much this is going for. Um, yeah, they don't have the exact model, but you get the point it's not none of the dell or the more expensive and beefy looking stuff none of this it's it's actually pretty basic so um available from these sellers 46 dollars that's a bit more um than what i was getting it for but cool uh kind of the same thing so here's your first look so this is thin Invent micro one which actually states cortex the second thin invent micro 2 does not so again we'll just take a look at it and we'll see what sort of hardware it's actually running and i'll give you an overlook of the specs and all of that stuff all right so here we are uh, with a thin client box and so yeah quite small has one power button on there and that's it so it has two two uh, this is, uh, it has a single usb port over here uh two usb ports here it, it looks like it's usb 3 but it's not it's usb 2 microphone headphone vga and hdmi by default it's configured only for vga uh, but you can turn it on configure for both vga and hdmi that works as well i'm not sure if dual displays are, are allowed or if it's just um to mirror display um your lan cable you definitely don't want to plug it if you're any any if, if you care about security even like a bit um and your five volts in 
so not 12 volts 5 volts uh, so just be wary of that it come came in a box with all the adapters and stuff so that was nice let me get that as well so not much of an unboxing but um this was the box i guess um yeah nothing nothing too special just a cardboard box with like a stick on label uh, and this thing just sat in there like that and i think we have some cables or just the um, just the power adapter here which is a usb to um barrel jack so it's in itself it's actually a pretty useful thing to keep around just because of the power adapter it's a nice 5 volt 2 amp one um, provided that it actually can deliver that much power but just the usb to a nice barrel jack connector is quite useful as well so we'll just remove that from the box and harvest that apart from it it just has two screws which also can be harvested and the box itself is pretty useless it doesn't say much um so we have i think one two three screws so as you can see i have already opened it up once uh, nothing too special uh, but it's kind of a pain to get the pcb out so I, I guess you guys just will see in a few moments what i mean by that yeah we'll power it on once i have everything out I, I i was supposed to power it on but you know what let's power it on and show you guys how it works the reason i have this gaming mouse out because the other uh logitech wireless keyboard and mouse kit i have or the, the small portable one uh does not work with this so it's old enough not to have drivers for that thing um which is basically the generic uh usb2 keyboard mouse uh hid drivers in linux but it does not support it so it's ancient it all it has is this, this mouse so um all it all it can work is with like wired mouse and old stuff so i'll power, plug that in doesn't matter which usb port you plug in and now i'll turn on the capture card so you guys can see it's all black go ahead uh, plug this in and it lights up you can see it lights up there not surprisingly nothing on the capture card which is a bit concerning i wonder if it's gone back nope there it is just took its time to boot and that is what you get there so you have your login password and you can set up clients and stuff and here in the settings menu uh, there's no password by default so under system settings you can see uh, the resolution and stuff and keyboard language function some security setting or whatever and here you have system info which is the interesting bit so straight off it says cortex a9 dual core 1.2 gigahertz which is accurate um 5 12 megabytes of ram uh 2 gigabytes of flash instead of the um 4 gigabytes that's written almost everywhere but that doesn't really matter because again who cares about the flash on a thin client you're not going to load anything up and a bunch of other things and the more interesting part is the last one which says linux 3.4 which is also very surprising so it doesn't have the driver enabled for the usb wireless device which i think any 3.4 device should just work with i was because of that usb keyboard mouse not working the wireless ones i thought this was like 2.x kernel uh, but it turns out it's 3.4 so that means they were just lazy enough and didn't build like a wireless didn't build the modules or something some something weirds happening with it so anywho uh that's more or less it uh, as far as setting it up and powering it on goes there's nothing more you can press this button and it turns off not sure if it goes into sleep mode uh now if you had a proper display it would actually would have turned off uh, and pressing this uh, but it's like on a capture card so it didn't and if i press the button again um it should boot up again or just come back up i i don't know let's wait to see if it actually boots up or something
no it it proper booted up again so it shut down so i'm i'm thinking it has a ram disk because shut down time wasn't that much and boot up time is quite long for a flash storage so it's probably loading the kernel and init ram fs onto the actual ram and that's what taking the time and once that's done it's it's just snappy uh, i mean it's a thin client it doesn't need to have a lot of um root fs stuff installed so it can do everything in init ram fs um so yeah we've booted up again so very windows xp vibe um on it i think the there was a firmware date to it so it says 2018 which is even more surprising because that's very recent and it definitely is not that recent the other thing that's concerning is it gets hot if you leave it on for a while like right now it's fine but if you leave it on for a while it will actually get pretty darn hot which makes sense because it's like cortex a9 and those were really known for getting extremely extremely warm um a8's not so much a9 and a15s i've, I've seen them getting hot uh, quite a bit so yeah let's power it on open it apart and see what it's all about so we had already taken the screws out there wasn't much left to it we can remove this that will you know just not give us much but uh, we can attempt to take out the base plate which is somewhat uh, you know clipped in there but you know you can just unclip it with it's it's really bad plastic so you can just unclip it like this and it will just come out and you can also force it out not saying you can't but you know and i will i i i wow this is not torn which is weird because i have opened it up in the past so i might have just gone the not tearing it route which is opening it up from the other side but right now i am i don't care if it gets torn and my warranty is gone wow i mean it's funny that you can open this thing without tearing the warranty void sticker like i have taken the pcb out so here's the PCB and that's the flash storage so the 2 gigabyte flash or that they say it's 2 gigabyte who knows how much honestly um, no screws uh, on the PCB itself there's some sort of a label here not sure what that's mean meant to be and let's take this out it is a bit of a pain to take out it's very snugly fit uh, so it, it gets it, it gets caught up on these poles that are in there and taking it out is kind of a struggle there we go and here is your uh, thin client in its bare bones and I'll have to be very careful not to make it go off center. So those are the two RAM modules. That's your LED and button combined. So a backlit key here. That's your Ethernet jack. That's the uh, Ethernet transformer thingy power. Uh, not much in terms of power circuitry, which seems to be all in this place. So that's your PMIC and that's a couple more inductors. So it looks like power goes in. And then has to travel a while uh, like a long way through here maybe somewhere here and then ends up here from there from these inductors goes into this PMIC and then off to everywhere else which is a weird design I would have thought that at least some bit of power regulation would be here and that will go off to PMIC but you know people design the way they want to um, there's a diode missing which I don't know why but it is um, and yeah so there's your 24 megahertz uh, clock and a 25 megahertz clock here probably for the network uh, there's a usb there's a sd card uh, slot missing so that was nice to see maybe we can uh, bodge in an sd card here which is not that b uh, big of a deal uh, if you have a micro sd module you can do that easily and then we have a usb port missing here 
uh, but the most interesting part of the whole shebang is the UART port here so that means we can solder in headers and we can get some console out of it uh, which would be interesting and very um, helpful so as I said these are USB 2 ports not USB 3 ports uh, as indicated by the lack of extra USB 3 pins here um, yeah so not a not a not a very good indication where everything's hidden um, there's some sort of IC missing very close to this USB port which is not very surprising but why I, I, I don't know there was, there was supposed to be something uh, another clock missing so probably the clock has to do something with this IC which also missing uh, I hope this is not something related to UR debug like like a serial thingy mm, that would be bad and we won't be able to get you out out of it but we are hoping to get you out out of it um, and yeah apart from the missing crystal uh, two major things is like it's missing another USB port and an SD card slot um, apart from that at the back everything's pretty normal you can see the little heat heat spread area for the PMIC um, all your uh, caps here uh, bypass caps for the CPU and you know I am I am um, yeah let's just take the heat sink off that's probably what you are all wondering about uh, it's an all winner 810 uh, not sure if it's clear to everyone uh, but it, it clearly says all winner 810 over there and these are for the time for the time these were when they released pretty beefy uh, CPUs um, oh, the one I have I don't know if it says here but the one I had used to boast uh, dual core uh, in big letters uh, because it was a big deal back then when they came out I think the only thing that's left to do is to solder some headers might not be possible that way because I see they are they've blocked it out on the other end so we might just have to like solder wires directly on here uh, and I need to figure out what which is the ground wire and what's the positive one let's continuity test for ground oh. so that's ground so one of these is power don't know which one but pretty sure that's ground let's put it in volt mode and see there's nothing down there that might kill us or i can just use the actual thing to prop it up it's not a very good prop not doing a good job propping it up though So that's ground and that's 3.3 volts so we have VCC here so these two must be TX and RX uh, which is sure they look like they are active which is nice uh, because I can see activity here and on this one not sure all right so that's this RX so that won't be active but there we go that's our uh, VCC that should be either one of them tx or rx both of them are high so all right so plug it out there we go so everything soldered on looks good and we can go ahead and try it out